Ted Kaczynski, aka the Unabomber, killed three individuals and wounded 23 over almost two decades as a one-man terrorist. He was a child genius with an IQ of 167 and he entered Harvard University at 16 years old. Some forensic psychiatrists believe that he had paranoid schizophrenia, but some didn't. In this video, I will tell you what I think. So first, a bit of background about his crimes then I'll give you my psychoanalysis. So what were the Unabomber's crimes? The bombings started in 1978 and they carried on till 1995. Most of Kaczynski's victims were either academics or they were businessmen connected to the field of computer or technology. And he would made hand-delivered sophisticated bombs. He made about 16 of them altogether. The very first was directed to a professor of materials engineering called Buckley Crist. And it was left in the lot of a University of Chicago parking lot with the victim's return address. And so it was sent back to the victim. And then Chris found it, thought it was a little bit suspicious, gave it to the police. The police opened it and it exploded causing only minor injuries. The second bomb was sent a year later to another university and it was concealed inside a cigar box which was just left on a table. And again, it caused minor injuries and that was to a student who opened it. It's so like my mama always said, never leave cigar boxes unattended. And I thought she was just kidding. Kaczynski even made a homemade pipe bomb which got onto the cargo hold of an American Airlines flight in 1979, although it actually failed to explode. So to give you an example of one of his more severe efforts, there was a multinational public relations and communications firm named Brunson Marstella and it had an executive named Thomas Mosser. So in 1994 he was killed after opening a nail bomb that was sent by Kaczynski to his home address which was in New Jersey. Kaczynski wrote to the New York Times and said that he'd send it because of Mosser's work which included repairing the public image of Exxon after the infamous oil spill which occurred in Alaska in March 1989 where an oil tanker struck a reef bleeding out more than 10 million gallons of crude oil. In 1995 after he had done decades of bombing, he was known as the Unabomber, which is short for the University and Airline Bomber. Kaczynski made a manifesto and he demanded that this would be punished or the bombings would continue. The New York Times actually did this, they actually published it and it was like this um, lengthy and rambling, ranting, raging rant against technology culture. As I will outline later in this video, the form as well as the content of this manifesto could possibly indicate schizophrenia. Somewhat ironically, his own brother recognized the style and the content of the comments of the manifesto and they dobbed him in. And that's how Kaczynski actually got arrested by his own brother. Is that irony? I'm not sure. Is it just a coincidence? Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments sections below. Okay, so let's look at the Unabomber's background. Kaczynski was born in Chicago on May 22nd, 1942. So he shares the same birthday with George Best, legendary footballer who struggled with alcohol, and Novak Djokovic, number one ranked tennis player at the moment, who struggles with gluten, and Naomi Campbell famous supermodel who struggled with manners. Kaczynski had severe hives as a young boy, which forced him into hospital isolation. So that meant he had limited contact with others. And apparently he showed little emotion as a baby for months. In fact, when he was a child, he showed sympathy for animals in cages more than people or other animals that were helpless. And his own mother speculated that this happened because of his experience of the hospital isolation. So Kaczynski was actually initially a leader amongst his peers, although he was so clever that he skipped sixth grade and then he didn't fit in with the older children who bullied him and he was described as aloof even as a child. So Kaczynski earned a master's and a PhD in maths or for our American viewer in math at the University of Michigan and he joined the mathematics faculty at UC Berkeley which is pretty prestigious but inexplicably he resigned two years later. As a graduate he sought treatment for depression and anxiety and also apparently had some sexual identity confusion issues. From that point onwards, Kaczynski withdrew from the world. He made himself a log cabin in the Montana woods without running water or electricity. And he just sort of got by with very little means apart from money that his family sent him and just doing odd jobs here and there. Hello, cruel world. What you just saw there was a tiny little tantalizing taste. Mm -hmm. Kind of nutty of a much longer episode. You should go check it out if you're interested. The link will be in the description below. If you're a fan of either true crime or mental illness <clears throat> or the crossover between the two, then you've got to go and check out my main YouTube channel, A Psych for Sore Minds, 
My name is Dr. Shaham Das. I'm a consultant forensic psychiatrist. I assess mentally disordered offenders for a living so that you don't have to. My channel covers a whole range, a smorgasbord of topics related to true crime and mental illness. For example, high profile true crime cases with my own kind of personal psychoanalysis of individuals. I discuss issues related to criminality. I discuss individual diagnoses. I give advice about psychiatric problems. I interview ex-patients. I do a lot. There is something for everybody on my channel and I implore you to go and check it out. You can even steal some of my ideas, palm them off as your own to impress your friends and impress people at dinner parties. It's all good. I've got your back. Until next time, stay euthymic, check out my channel and please do not forget, I love you.